So this tool, um, I call it the, uh, the observer or the witnesser tool. And uh, so uh, I'll just do it through the, the usual mechanism. And even though I do it through this usual mechanism, I'm going to use, um, well, I'll use, I'll use the mug as usual. <clears throat> okay, so you want to, I mean, sometimes it's good, you know, if you're feeling very um, <clears throat> separated, I think that's the Course in Miracles word, if you're feeling very much in separation or fear in separation, then how do you detach from that? How do you get back into, into the oneness or the unity? So I think it is a very simple exercise, but this is, you know, I, I think, uh, think of it like object and observer. What's, <clears throat> what is the observer and what is the object? You know, and then the process of the observer is getting clarity. Is, is the object and the observer in any way related? Okay, and that's an, an important thing because, <clears throat> I mean, I come, from a, I come from a food addiction background. You know, I'll, I'll share this. Um, so, uh, The Course of Miracles, you know, some of the early lessons in the Course of Miracles are that everything in the room is meaningless. The table is meaningless. Uh, the chair is meaningless, the plant is meaningless, but being a food addict, now if there was a donut on the table, that would not be meaningless for me. That would be meaningful. Now, <clears throat> here's the thing. For most people, unless you're a mug addict, um, this mug is what I'd call meaningless to most people. So when I hold this mug up, and this is a practical exercise, this is not intellectual, I'm holding a mug up, and uh, we're on camera, but uh, so everything's being recorded. But you know, you can nod your head yes or no. Is anyone this mug? Are you this mug? Not this mug? No, you're not this mug. Okay, <laughs> nobody's this mug. So it's very clear that the, the observer of the mug, this is an object. When I say it's an object, you can, you, you can observe its limited nature. Yeah? So it, its shape, its height, and its width. <clears throat> Also, you said you're not, the people here have said they're not the mug, so the people here are quite elevated. But, uh, <laughs> or well, they're not mug addicts, but anyway, one of the two. So that means that it's very, very clear, exp experientially, that the observer and the observed, the observer and the object are not related. There is what I call detached distance between the mug and the observer. Also, if I move the mug from one place to another, are you the mug? No. If I hide the mug, are you the mug? If I just put the mug right in front of you and hold it there, are you the mug? No. Okay, good. So this is, this is actually the basis of self-inquiry. So am I an object? This is how you, can, you could call it that. You could say, like, you could change the name of it to am I an, am I an object? So, not, so this is a mug. Now this is a mug, it can be in front of you, it can move from place to place. But I think one of the qualities of this mug, for most people, it's meaningless. And therefore, for most people, there's what I call detached witnessing. You know, I'll use this word, detached witnessing. Okay, so the next thing is, <clears throat> so what we're trying to do is find out who I am. What am I? Am I an object or am I not an object? Okay, there's one way to look at it. Can I be something that is an, an object? Or can I be something that's in front of me? Or can I be something that's passing before me? Or can I be something that's here and then is not here? And then is here and then is not here? What, <clears throat> who am I and what am I? Um, it might be better to say what am I? So okay, so that's that. So the next thing is, uh, let's go to thoughts. Let's say thinking, thoughts. Now, there's a stream of thoughts. Of course, the miracles have a, like a conveyor belt, isn't there? It's like a conveyor belt of thoughts going past, like the sky is blue, uh, the pillow is red, you know, the leaf is green. So these, these, you know, one has a stream of thoughts. And sometimes there's many thoughts flying by and there's sometimes very few thoughts flying by. There might even be glimpses where there's absolutely no thoughts. Uh, and then there might be thoughts coming back again. So now this is an, an experiential question. So we, we all agreed that we are not the mug. Even if I put the mug before you and, and sort of put it here and there, you're still not the mug. So thoughts. So thoughts are passing by. Are you your thoughts? This is an, an experience. 
So, so here's the thing. So if a thought, so if I put a mug in front of you, it's very clear. If in fact I put it from one side of you to the other side of you, there's cl it's clear that you are not the mug. There is space between you and the mug. And you're not, no one's got, like, confused, I might be the mug. No, I, I think I actually am a mug. No one sort of got that confusion. But here's the thing with thoughts. Now, if you've been practicing the witnesser, you'll know that the witnesser of thoughts is not the thoughts, and there will be a space, there will be a detached ob observation of the thoughts. However, if you're what I call a thought addict, if you're addicted to being in your thoughts, you, you find this exercise very difficult to do. Because you, uh, it's very, very hard to get detached space between something you're addicted to. Because it has what I call, it's extremely special or it's extremely meaningful. And so there seems to be no space between the observing of thoughts and thoughts. So just keep practicing with that. So if there is, you know, okay, so. There's a thought passing by. You want another way to do it is like imagine. Uh, shouldn't really imagine because it's not an imagining exercise. But if clouds are passing by in the sky, then that which observes the clouds pass by is that a cloud? So that which is observing one cloud pass by the next cloud, is it a cloud that sees clouds or is it an observing field that observes clouds pass by? The same thing with thoughts. Now, if someone was very addicted to clouds, which I don't think there are too many people, they might be addicted to donuts, but not addicted to clouds, then you'd actually, you'd have an argument with me and say, I am the cloud, and you'd say, uh, but actually, if you're not identified with the cloud, or the clouds are not meaningless, it's very clear you're not the cloud. So, see if uh, you're, th what's observing your thoughts, and even if you feel you are the thoughts, then, how do you experience that? So this is the next thing. Like, let's say you're having trouble experiencing that which is witnessing thoughts. But what are you that is, that is having trouble witnessing detachment to thoughts? What are you? Are you a thought that just went past in the mind? And if not, then what are you? Are you a thought? And if you're not a thought, then what are you? And if whatever you are, <coughs> is there something observing that? So these are experiential questions. Now the thing is, if you're addicted to your thoughts, which I think some people might be, if you're addicted to your thoughts, thank you, then see if you can just let go of the meaning. See if there is something here which is not interested in your thoughts. So, okay, if there is interest, is there something here which is not interested in thoughts? Is there an observer which is not interested in thoughts? And if so, has, there, has a space arisen between the thoughts and that which is observing thoughts? And if not, what are you? And what's observing you? So this is the thing, this is the first thing to do. Are you your thoughts or is there an observer of thoughts? <clears throat> and if not, is, can you let go? All right, or another way to do it, just let go of being so interested in your thoughts and see if some space opens up. Drop them, they're meaningless. Now, is there a detached observing? Are they starting to go into the distance? The next thing is the body. So hopefully you're starting to get a space between, and if you go deeper into the observer, the thoughts will start to disappear because what you're not interested in starts to disappear. The body, is there a sense of your physical body? And if so, if there's a, an awareness of the body, like how, how tall it is, how wide it is, what's observing that shape? Just remember, like, the mug has got a height and a width. What is observing your the shape of the body? So can you be the detached observing of the body? And that which observes the body, does that have a, 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 is that limited? And if it is limited, that which is observing the shape of the body, then what's observing the, the limits of that observing? So keep taking it back until there's no limits on that. The next thing, uh, if you're making any images, if you're making any pictures in the mind, what observes pictures? Because pictures can come and go. But what witnesses pictures come and go? Is that which is observing a picture? 
the picture. So as you keep detaching, first detach from your thoughts, detach from body, you should go detach from images. Is there any sense of time? But is there something which observes time? Is there something here which is not interested in time? The same thing with noise. Is there something that's observing noise? And if so, can you go to the observer of that? So if you keep going to that which is witnessing, let me put it a little shit. Okay, so if you just keep going to that which is observing, now wherever you are, see, is there anything that's happening here? And are you the thing that's happening, or can you be that which is observing? Okay, we'll stop right there.